Caitlin Tui's legacy as a prep and collegiate athlete has been one of the most well-documented, celebrated, and enthralling careers one could possibly watch. Her time on the track has without a doubt grounded her now as a potential candidate for the 2024 Olympics, but I think some would agree that her time on the grass during the cross-country seasons are just as, if not more enjoyable to witness. Whether it was a smoother, flatter course, or a technically sound and fairly hilly course with not the most ideal weather, Tui seemed to have made it all work, and at many points in her career was the face of American youth cross country as a result. While many know the general story of her prolific wins at major events, there's a deeper layer to just how groundbreaking Tui was at this time. So let's take it back a few years and get into the nitty gritty of arguably the greatest girls cross country runner to ever exist. Following a national record in the indoor mile and 1500 in seventh grade, Caitlin Tui would kickstart her cross country career as a Red Raider in eighth grade. At her very first meet, she would win the entire thing by 43 seconds and even won her section championships too. However, at the state championships, one of the most stacked in the nation, she would place phenomenally snagging a top 10 spot. But surprisingly enough, would be caught in a rare era where there were somehow even more talented middle school runners above her, one of which happened to be the state champion. After placing fifth at the following federations meet, qualifying for the prestigious Nike Cross Nationals, with a 6th place finish at the regional meet, Tui would get a chance to observe where exactly she lied on the distance running totem pole. A 49th place finish would put her as the 4th highest runner around her age, and would land a spot comfortably on the top 100 overall rankings on high school ranking site Dystat. Freshman year demonstrated remarkable improvements on all fronts, as low or sub-18 times were now a possibility, and she would also begin to place above her freshman contemporaries now at the New York State and Federations meet, placing runner-up both times to sophomore talent Kelsey Camille. Punching her ticket to her second NXN competition in a row, Tui would find herself just inches away from a top 10 spot, finishing in 13th during a hectic last kick showdown. She would place 17th in the end season rankings as a result, a 68 placement improvement. However, Tui's first genuine bouts of consistent success would end up arriving during her outdoor track season, as a clean resume of first place finishes and a state title would define her as a force to be reckoned with come the 2017 fall season. Sophomore year is where Caitlin Tui goes from a prodigious, statewide phenomenon into an absolute game changer that morphed what it meant to dominate a running oriented sport. Her section races at the beginning of the season more or less confirmed her outdoor track fitness and winning the state championship solidified her as a legitimate threat as a regional champion contender. However, just before this at the New York Federations meet, she would break the 17 minute barrier for the first time ever but out of all the courses to do it on, it was a massive shock to everyone. We're talking nearly 400 feet of total climbing, 20% grade hills. Surely there is a metric we can use besides time to describe just how absurd this mark really is. This is where we'll introduce the concept of speed ratings in cross country. Since cross country times vary drastically due to the different amount of hills, terrain, and more, speed ratings are meant to bridge that gap as much as possible. What you're doing is essentially aggregating as many cross-country races as you can, identifying the gaps of how much the person is winning by, what athletes are involved, and just using a variety of statistical methods where a certain rating is eventually spit out. The highest speed rating ever set was by Amber Trotter at the 2002 Foot Locker Nationals, with a staggering 180 rating. These ratings are primarily done in the New York area, but the most major invitationals are usually cover too. 
This is a very simplified definition of it, and it has a lot more merit and accuracy to it than you may think. So I would suggest visiting Bill Malin's website if you want to know more, as he puts in an obscene amount of work to provide these fun statistics, that'll be crucial here. Right, the Federation's race. Tui's performance at this meet was groundbreaking. First, she won the race over New York rival Kelsey Camille by 40 seconds. Then she broke Nicole Blood's course record from 2004 by 35 seconds. But what about the speed rating? Well, she set the fourth fastest speed rating in cross country history as a sophomore, as a 172 puts her among the greatest performances ever seen. Given the slight, slight bias towards Foot Locker Nationals, it's pretty much unheard of to see speed ratings this high for girls at a non national meet. And given her time would have been legitimately competitive in the boys' race, some were calling this perhaps the greatest cross-country performance in girls' history. Although, Tui nearly replicated this same level of proficiency yet again, winning the NXN regional meet by over a minute and snagging another 170 rating. It should also be worth mentioning by this point that Tui had been dominating the number one spot for quite a while now but in a rare sequence of events, was also sharing the spot with another runner from the other side of the country, which was Claudia Lane from Malibu, California. Unfortunately, the two never got the chance to meet up since Lane went to Foot Locker and Tui went to NXN. But nevertheless, Tui still had the fourth and fifth highest ranked girls to go up against, which were seniors Rebecca Story and Camelia No. While this did set the stage for some competition, the reality was that Tui was long gone after just two minutes of racing. I mean, just to keep the broadcast fresh, they spent a good chunk of the first half on the chase pack before cutting back to what appeared to be a historical performance from Tui. As she came through the finish line, she'd win her first national title as a sophomore breaking Katie Rainsberger's course record by 11 seconds and replicated yet another 170 tier speed rating, clocking in her second 172. With Claudia Lane out of the mix in 2018 due to injuries, every single eye was on the Junior Red Raider to replicate, or better yet, improve on her already insane career thus far. Before her junior year would be underway, her sophomore track season was just as otherworldly, as national records of all sorts were a common theme that almost had to make her junior year a good one. But just how good was it exactly? I'm gonna let you decide that one for yourself. Job. You're amazing. Uh, I 
just wanted to stay relaxed and then about 2K in, I knew I was feeling good, so I started trying to get up and walk away. Congratulations. Following perhaps the single greatest cross-country season ever by a high school girl, it was almost impossible to believe that Caitlin Tui still had another year left in the tank. Unfortunately, Tui would face an injury during her outdoor track season, submitting her to her largest break from the sport by far, which would be a month-long hiatus. Thankfully, a quick return to form would be evident as she would run a blazing 1622 opener at the Great American Cross Country Festival, a mark that would also grant a solid 161 speed rating. While signs of fitness would start to glimmer more and more again, it would still slightly pale in comparison to the marks that she had been putting up in the past on the exact same courses. In all fairness, she had come back from a much longer break than usual. But did this mean that for once that an athlete or two could contend her at Nike Cross Nationals, and even worse, could threaten to end the elusive three-peat right then and there as well? Tui's unabashed start is still front and center as usual, but this time around someone committed to latching onto her for a change, as rank 6, Sydney Torvaldson, remains just a couple healthy strides behind Tui with other New York phenom Claire Walters in third, a name that had Tui's number in the past during their middle school years. Following a downhill section about six minutes in, Tui is able to execute a successful surge that puts a few extra strides between her and Torvaldsen. Eventually, Torvaldsen is joined by three other girls, but a few minutes later, she pulls away but is eventually joined again by rank 11 senior, Taylor Ewer. Although, Tui has widened the gap from a few strides to now a healthy 7 seconds, meaning that a respectful last mile will likely solidify the title at this point. As the last hill remains in sight, this would normally be Tui's bread and butter, but this time around would be quite the detriment. Ewart and Torvaldson are now new national contenders before anyone knows it and as Tui frantically looks for any remaining gears to hold them off, it would result in one of the most theatrical NXN finishes ever seen in the sport's history. She's gonna gonna keep that footing, gotta keep that footing all the way through. Caitlin Tui! Caitlin Tui, a three-time Nike Cross Nationals champion. And our 2019 NXN champion, the first ever to win this event three times. Congratulations to Caitlin Dewey. Let's go, Caitlin! Caitlin, why don't you step forward? Three NXN titles would undoubtedly make Caitlin Tui the most decorated cross country runner in high school. While her first two wins were practically time trials that happened to result in national titles, an unexpectedly long break from the sport would make her third one a brutally tough task to fulfill, especially with the rising talent that had likely been eyeing her up for the last couple years. Shortly after this historical performance, Tui would sign to the University of North Carolina to join the Wolfpack for the next four years. Let's see how exactly she fared within the D1 atmosphere, where the competition would be tougher, and where the collegiate adaptation in general might be just as difficult as well. Caitlin Tui's collegiate cross-country debut would unfortunately be tentative due to the 2020 pandemic that delayed collegiate sports as a whole. After over a year with no competitive showings, February 2021 would mark the return of her distance running endeavors, but appeared to be in subpar shape compared to what we've seen before. To remedy the cancelled 2020 cross-country championships, the NCAA made the strange decision to host them just days after the indoor track ones in 2021. She would ultimately place 24th, which was actually the highest freshman placement by 20 women 
and the fact that this was her debut out of all things showed a lot of promise moving forward. Due to the messy nature of how this season was handled as well, Tui would be granted an extra year of eligibility, meaning her cross-country season had technically not even started yet. Now her first formal grass running season was much more representative of her old self, as while she wasn't outright winning meets like back in high school, her top 5 finish at the prolific Nuttycomb Invitational was more than enough to consider Tui as a legitimate threat already. At her conference meet, she would take the runner-up medal to former rival, now teammate Kelsey Camille, and managed to replicate this success by placing second at a regional meet too. At the D1 Championships, Tui would remain within striking distance of the lead pack up until around 5k in, but would falter back a few placements as the upperclassmen broke away, and would place 15th to help NC State win their first NCAA title in school history. While it seemed like Tui had a bit more to offer when it came to national competitions, her sophomore track season would be the defining moment in her collegiate career, where she won her first ever NCAA title in the Outdoor 5000. What was just as interesting was that Florida's Parker Valby, a freshman, would trail just behind Tui to come in second, even leading a decent portion of the race over her earlier. These two coincidentally would begin to see massive improvements their following cross-country season. As we'll see soon, their rival would fester quickly, despite not facing each other directly that often. Like last year, Nutty Comb would be the prime determinant of her fitness going into the championship part of the season. She would take her first ever title at this meet, followed by her first conference title and her first regional title, in very, very convincing fashions. Valby was also handling things her way with blistering fast times, winning over previous national champions, and like Tui would handily win her first conference and regional cross-country titles. By this point, people began to take note of the glaring similarities in their improvement, combine the fact that they were still fairly young, which sparked perhaps the most intense and intriguing rivalry the sport had seen in quite a while. The two had faced off last year where neither put a dent in the top 10, but with them both now having their own undefeated seasons, and really their own defined racing styles, there is quite literally nothing that could have prepared a single soul for how the 2022 NCAA Cross Country Championships could have unfolded. Valby moved on that second K. That was a 309 second K. You know, just it took about five minute pace. So she is running hard, and the women behind her are going to have to work together if they're going to. Right now, it's happening. This it's is happening. it. This How quickly is can it. you close this gap? We're going to the arms, and it's about. Championship. She's got the low stick. Will her team follow? Valby's going to come through just behind in second. A great way to go. Way to go. What do you what do you have to say the the live view? Oh, that's not live. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is what a champion looks like right here. Yeah. Tui's 2023 fall season would likely be the last one competing with the Wolf Pack. She had an individual and a team title to help out with, so a lot was on the line for her last hurrah with her team. However, 
her approach to the season would be a bit delayed due to a tighter focus on qualifying for the 2024 Olympics. For a change as well, Parker Valby would actually be making her debut at the Nuttycomb Invitational. And while Tui originally wasn't racing here, she would change her mind last second and would give the people what they wanted. The result? Valby ran away with it from the start and won by a healthy 11 seconds. The two Titans would dominate their conference and regional championships once again, so with no more waiting, let's see if the tactics would change and if Tui would try to contest Valby early in the race for the showdown of the year that everyone had been anticipating at this point. Overall, Caitlin Tui possessed an authority over cross country in high school that is still difficult to comprehend today. Her ability to desecrate every course record within sight, win national titles with ease, and the amount of historical speed ratings she has set is a resume that running statisticians will blankly stare at their spreadsheets and think, how the hell was a career like this even possible? Even though it didn't translate perfectly over to the NCAA like some had predicted, she still had a phenomenal career at the Wolfpack and was a fantastic asset in propelling NC State to the very top, while getting a bit of individual glory herself along the way. It would be intriguing to see Tui make a return to cross country at an international event, but with her striving to compete at the 2024 Olympics on the track, we've likely witnessed the end of an era. And now it's time to wait for the new stars to rise and for a new chapter to unfold. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you want to support the channel for more content like this, come on over and become a patron. Drop a sub and check out my other links below. I'll see you on whatever video I upload next and take care.